Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Tuesday, December 7th, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 10.30 a.m. in Mexico City. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in history, 69 years ago today, uh, armed forces from the Empire of Japan bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, bringing the United States into World War II. The big news in the U.S. concerns uh, uh, what seems to be some sort of a deal between President Obama and the Republicans in the Congress. Inconceivably, even though the current Republican uh, configuration in the Congress is a substantial minority in both the House and the Senate, the Republicans seem to have been able to have dictated an extension of the Bush-era tax cuts uh, for at least 13 more months. Also, as part of the deal, the President has agreed to be able to extend the unemployment benefits for the long-term unemployed. As we speak, Vice President Biden is on Capitol Hill right now uh, trying to assuage the uh, tempers of the uh, Democratic Congress who are outraged because the President seems to have cut a deal here, seemingly in contrast to his uh, statements. However, to be fair to the President, when dealing with the recalcitrant Republicans to have uh, ended up in a situation where Congress adjourned in two weeks without having taken any action whatsoever in the midst of a uh, very stumbling recovery from a recession, uh, that would have been a very bad solution. So the President was forced to suck it up and seemingly do what he had to do. Also very bad news on the sports front, the New York Jets lost last night to the New England Patriots 40 Five to three. They got blown out. Not good. We'll go to our main news. The Lloyds insurer Beasley has named Ralph Tolley as a non-executive director and Adrian Cox as executive director. Tolley has also been appointed to the insurer's audit committee. Tolley joined the board of Beasley's Lloyds managing agency, Beasley Furlong, as a non-ED in June. Of course, Mr. Tolley retired as franchise performance director at Lloyds in December of 2009 after seven years in that role. He had previously been the chief underwriting officer at Faraday. Cox joined Beasley in 01. He was appointed to the board of Beasley Furlong and head of the specialty lines division in June of 08. So that's good. We've been waiting for Mr. Uh, Tolley to begin to reemerge, and he's beginning to do so. News from Israel that the huge Carmel fire and the severe damage it caused will likely cause little damage to Israel's insurance companies. Initial estimates are that insurance claims will be in the tens of millions of shekels at least and that they could reach hundreds of millions. It's premature to estimate the damage because the scale is not yet known. However, the industry and the Israeli insurance regulators were of one mind this morning, and that is that the claims do not pose a threat to the stability of the insurance companies, which will have no difficulty meeting the payments due, whether from the point of view of their capital or from the point of view of reinsurance. From an insurance point of view, this is not such a great disaster, said a senior Israeli insurance industry figure. He said that uh, this is what we are here for. Our hour has come. Anyone who claims from private insurance will not be able to make a claim from the government for the same damage. Uh, the state will deal with people who suffered damage in the fire and were not covered by insurance. The terms in which that compensation will be paid are not clear yet. Richard Banks in Insurance Day has an interesting article about Iran and insurance. Iran's Finance and Economic Affairs Ministry has ordered the creation of a new insurance operation in the face of continued sanctions against the country. According to the managing director of Iran insurance company, Javad Samanian, quoted in the Tehran Times, the ministry has invited approaches from corporate entities and individuals, quote, interested in playing a role in Iran's economy. The latest development in Iran's efforts to overcome the strains produced by the international sanctions. Um, a new report from Research and Markets published this month warned that the problems facing Iran's insurance sector are, quote, significant and numerous. Some of the Middle East's largest insurers are based in Iran, which underscores the uh, appreciation of the concept of insurance, but the prospects for the sector as a whole are not good. 
Uh, one of the reasons is the rampant inflation that has beset the country. For much of the past decade, Iran has experienced inflation of about 15 percent, although the rate rose to 27 percent in 2009. That, of course, as the report, distorts the impacts of prices and complicates competition by insurers on the basis of price. Well, in Europe, the European Union has backed Russia's entry to the World Trade Organization, clearing the way for Russia to join the WTO next year. The EU and Russia signed an agreement on the sidelines of an EU-Russia summit on Tuesday after the two powers resolved questions that had stopped the EU approval. They've signed a memo of understanding, said John Clancy, an EU spokesman. Russia's $1.2 trillion economy makes it the largest outside the World Trade Organization, and the World Bank has estimated that entree could increase it by as much as 3.3 percent in the medium term and 11 percent in the long term. The EU represents almost 500 million people. It's Russia's biggest trading partner, and it's ending its veto largely because of Moscow's commitments to phase out export tariffs on timber, removing a major obstacle to Russia's entree. In New Delhi, India and France have signed the multi-billion dollar agreement to build two nuclear power plants in India. The agreement's valued at over nine billion U.S. It was signed yesterday in the presence of the, uh, the Indian Prime Minister Manamon Singh and Nicolas Sarkozy, the French president, who was in India on a four-day visit. According to the agreement, one of France's main nuclear power companies, Arriva, will build two pressurized reactors of 1,650 megawatts each. Uh, the uh, Al Jazeera press agency reports in New Delhi that the deal is much more significant for France than it is for India. Quote, France needs this deal because it's worth over 2 billion euros for two nuclear reactors. That's going to drum up jobs in France and it's going to infuse the French economy. For India, it's more about regional significance that they are getting out of this. The deal marks the first two of 20 nuclear reactors that India wants to build to meet its soaring energy demand. Well, if you ever had the uh, opportunity to have visited Russia uh, during the 1970s, you would have noticed statues of Lenin just about everywhere. They're ubiquitous. Well, a statue of Vladimir Lenin, the former Soviet leader and the uh, founder of the Soviet state in 1917, has been bombed in a suburb of St. Petersburg. Police said the blast had seriously damaged the monument and shattered windows in nearby apartments. The city governor linked the explosion to another attack last year on a larger Lenin statue in central St. Petersburg. Correspondents say statues of Lenin remain numerous in Russia even after 20 years of the collapse of the Soviet Union. The attack last night took place in the St. Petersburg suburb of Pushkin. The bombing was condemned by the St. Petersburg governor. He said, quote, anyone who raises their hand to monuments is against history and the feelings of our citizen. Whatever they may think of Lenin, all the citizens of our country are outraged by this act. Last year's attack targeted one of Russia's most famous Lenin statues, standing outside Finland Station in St. Petersburg. It was left with a gaping hole in its ear, actually in its rear, excuse me. Police never caught the attackers, but the statue was repaired by the city authorities, but it was later replaced with a new statue. The Finland station, of course, is where Lenin arrived in his famous sealed train when the Germans sent him back in, uh, thinking that he might be able to agitate and thus weaken the Russian war effort on the eastern front of Germany. Well, he certainly did that, but then uh, they ended up having to pay in spades for that in World War II, just 20-some years later. That's all the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. If not, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.